Hello everyone, it is Josh here back today with another video, this time not in Prepare 3D or X-Plane 11 like is the usual standard, but in Train Simulator 2021. As uh, well promoted I guess in, in the channel trailer that went up, the sort of the, the comeback special if you will, um, I sort of stated that it wasn't just going to be uh, sort of flight sim anymore. I found that by doing just sort of one thing, you very quickly lost motivation, very quickly ran out of content as well. Whereas I figured out if I actually went across lots of different simulators, then there's a lot more content. So when content dries up for one, you go to the other, and then to another, and then by then more content is back for another one, and, and sort of the circle continues. And so I thought that'd be a great idea. I'm not going to be one of these massive channels that sort of does anything and everything, because then I find that you sort of get too broader scope and then you end up sort of going out there too far and kind of want to be like a, a wannabe squirrel or Jeff Faviano or something like that, which those guys are great but that's not my trend. I want to do well but it's not a full time thing for me, never will be. But I want to do things that I enjoy and these sort of three primary simulators being, you know, Flight Sim P3 slash X Plane, Train Sim 2021 slash TSW and Omsi 2 Bus Sim, uh, sort of the three main things I play so I figured they're the sort of the three main things I focused on. Anyhow, I digress because we are doing a two-part special scenario today. Um, two parts for the reason it's 90 minutes long and so to cut down I'm going to do two sort of roughly 45 minute videos. It won't quite work out like that but we'll sort of um, cut it in between. I'll explain as we sort of get a little bit further on. Anyway, we're on the Settle to Carlisle line today um, which is quite old now I think isn't it as far as DGG routes go. I can't quite remember how old it is but I think if I, I want to say this goes back to RSC days, but I could be wrong. Um, it certainly looks like RSC or maybe even Kuju days with that sort of that signalling. Either way, it's quite an old route. Not that that matters, because what we're driving today is, well, it, it's pure excellence really, isn't it? It is uh, the lovely Armstrong Powerhouse Class 37, Volume 1 to Precise 37 fours, with a rake of Mark uh, 2s. Arriva Trains Wales Mark II. Arriva Trains Northern actually, I think it did the settled car. It's not, not Wales, it's Arriva Trains Northern and another 37 on the back. This is a scenario that I found on Alan Thompson's sim. It's one hotel to three, which is the 1333 uh, Carlisle to settle. This is a real route that used to operate between 2003 and 2004 with uh, a rake of uh, 237s uh, and, and four Mark II coaches. So, Enough babbling, we'll crack on with the scenario, and apparently we'll go into the cab, which is not what I wanted to do, but we'll do that anyway. I want to stay out here for a second. So we'll have a look at the blurb. Good afternoon, driver. You sign in here at Carlisle, about to work the 1 Echo 2-3 off of Carlisle. A camera crew are filming this it's, uh, working as it is about to end soon. The service will set on 23rd of September, just two days before the end of the local hall trains on the Settle and Carlisle. You will call it Appleby, 1410, Kirkby Stephen, 1424, and Settle at 1500. Don't forget to give the camera crew the mints you packed. Enjoy. Perfect. Okay. So we'll jump into the cab. We'll open the doors with a button T and we'll get everything set up. So, master key goes in. And we'll switch to engine only. And no AWS because we need to set this up. Very nice. NRN goes on, not that we have any data I don't think, but we can give it a go. I don't really know how this works to be honest, so we'll just leave that as it is. I don't really know how the NRN works. Uh, we'll come over to here, we'll get some uh, lights on, so they can go on, tail lights can go off, instrument lights can go on, and that can stay as it is. We can turn the headlight on as well, which is that button there, and put the dimmer all the way up because the 37 looks amazing. DSD can go to Vigilance, which is what it should be. And we'll come out here, we'll have a look, make sure everything's set up. It is, we'll set the motor factor to six. Uh, actually, we'll set it to five, because I think that's about right. And, you know, clag to uh, 10, because I can imagine these being a little bit ragged towards the end. So. 37408 leading the way today. There's our make of make our rake of Mark IIs. Uh, this is the Armstrong Powerhouse Mark II Bs. 
and then the uh, 3741, the Scottish Railway Preservation Society leading the rear. Tail lights are already on, which is fine. Gotta love some Mark IIs, haven't you? Not that I un really understand Mark IIs. There's so many variants of them. I don't really understand all of the Mark IIs, but they look nice nonetheless. Sort of path the way for the modern day stock, really, didn't they? Because the Mark III's look similar, and then you've got the Mark IVs, which are also basically the same. And then the Mark V's are really where it's changing, but even then the fundamentals are still the same. 156 over here, Northern Spirit, very nice, and a cross country, Virgin Cross Country Voyager as well. Very nice. Or oh, two of them, actually. Two to Voyagers. Nice, nice, we like. We likey likey. So, we're about to get underway here. In fact, we are just got underway now. There's the whistle. So, I can't remember how to get this out of. Uh, well, this is a good start, isn't it? to be out of oh there we go so release the brakes She's coming down nicely and let's get a nice outside shot on this shall we as she departs so off we go Out the way, you idiots! There we are. Very nice indeed. Reaching 20 miles now, we'll shut the power off now. Should set this up as well so we actually see where we are. I have no doubt that DSD is going to catch us out at some point on this uh, 90 minute journey. So, next stop will be Appleby at uh, 14, 10, 30 minutes time. So we'll probably cut the video somewhere between Appleby and Kirkby Stephen. I would have thought maybe we'll cut it at uh, Appleby and then we'll do part two of the longer one. We'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll see. <coughs> you got to love the old style. AWS, haven't you? It is one of my favourite styles, I think. With the actual horn. Sounds better in just every single way. It's better than the digital stuff they have these days. I mean, I know one in 120 is just a little bit of brakes there. Got those back off now. Sort of just keep those flowing very nicely. HHAs on the side. I think they're HHAs, aren't they? Or they might be something else. They might be with the, um, I don't know. I d I'm very, very good with uh, sort of cargo stock. 50 mile an hour. It's shortly going down to 20 though, but we'll give it a little bit of beans for a second. Speeding. But it's fine. Now I 
I've never really been a fan of loco pulled stuff. I've never really been a fan of any sort of locomotive. It's always been like, you know, um, units for me because that's sort of what I grew up with. But 37s hold a really special place for me. 37s were the very, 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 very first um, locomotive that I saw. sound we love isn't it yeah so 37s were the very very first sort of loco that i saw growing up as a child and, and so they always seemed very this had that unique place for me because that's sort of really what introduced me to the world of loco hall stuff it was back when i was at southampton i think it was uh, possibly maybe somewhere else i can't remember because it was a very long time ago now um back as a kid and and so that's where i i guess found my love for, for 37s really um, but I think 37s are just great because they don't have that sort of... They look like a Deltic, but they're not a Deltic, you know? And, and I was never really a fan of Deltics, uh, which a lot of people are going to probably hate me for, but I never really was a fan of Deltics. They never really made sense to me. They were too big, too heavy. They never made sense, whereas 37s kind of did. Because 37s could, within reason, do pretty much anything, and they still do to this day. I mean, you've got... You know, modern day sort of the new Stadler flirt units that are coming in with the Bellio, Greater Anglia, being rescued by a 37. I don't really think you can you can beat that. Back the power off a little bit. 51% on the about fine. It's a fair old gradient. One in at 132 at the moment. So obviously not going to be cruising nicely. Put a little bit more power in, I think. See where that takes us. Probably going to be switching between the two, I would have thought. Sort of roughly 60 and 50%. Maybe a little bit more, we'll see. Maybe a little bit more. So we're somehow currently running 10 minutes late. I don't quite know how that works, but the time is coming down quite nicely, so that's uh, hopefully we'll be back on time by the time we get away. I don't quite know how that's happened because we, uh, we weren't too badly delayed out of. Uh, I'll only by my sheer incompetence of being unable to get the brakes off. This is just an excellent route, isn't it? I mean, I think considering it's such an old route now, and it really, really is, like, badly outdated. I mean, I'd love to see the AP track patch at the very least get put on this route. Uh, maybe something I'll work on for the future, I don't know. Um, this looks like a very abandoned station, doesn't it? Oh, it is an abandoned station, that's pretty cool. Let's have a look. It is an abandoned station. I have no idea what that is, but that's pretty cool. I should point out that I'm about as far away from Carlisle IRL as you can probably get within the UK right now so I have no route knowledge of this route at all so if you know any sort of of these abandoned stations and whatnot along the route then then please let me know because it's a route I've always wanted to do and never have done it's quite a lot I want to do actually uh, but unfortunately lockdown wants to keep us doing things otherwise which is a very very sad day But uh, it is what it is, isn't it? Speaking of which, lockdowns and things like that, how have we all been keeping? I realise I've been away for virtually the whole of a lockdown. There are good reasons for that. Uh, I guess reasons that it's probably not the best thing to go into. Well, it's not, it's not I guess, if it's not the best thing to go into on, on sort of videos, but it's just... It's not needed. There's a TSR coming up. Where 
Where is it? I don't see it. I'm using binoculars. I've got lost. I'm going to assume that's not for us, you know. And if it is, then, well, we've just broken quite a lot of rules, but there you go. We'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not a case of I don't want to go into it, it's just I don't think it's necessary to go into it anymore. If you want to know, then, then, uh, then by all means, ask and I, I shall tell, but, um, yeah. So, how have we all been keeping during the lockdown? Uh, I can imagine it's been sort of quite a lot of challenging times for people. Certainly, been challenging for me. Um, uh, un unfortunately, I've sort of fallen victim to the the wave of redundancy, so shall we say? Um, which is unfortunate, but uh, again, it is what it is, isn't it? You, you can't. There's not much you can really do about it. in general, I think. I, I don't understand people that don't like 37s. I know we're all entitled to our own opinions, of course, aren't we? But I just think, I don't know how you can hate such a workhorse of the sort of the British Rail, I guess, you know? I mean, they, they've got pretty much everywhere at some point, these 37s. And I think it's incredible that some of these 37s are outliving, like, passenger services like HSTs. In, in some respects, you know, they are they are outliving it, which I think is incredible, you know. It goes to prove that these old BR locos, they are reliable. to probably get on the brakes a little bit, I'd have thought. I have to be honest, the one thing I really like about the settle to Carlisle um, is not those barriers. <laughs> no, I, I, I like the gradients because there's a lot of them. You see, we're going down and then we're immediately basically going back up. Though. There's a lot of gradient changes. Not so much speed changes, which is fine, but gradient changes, which is enough to keep you on your toes. Speed changes, I think, are annoying when there's a lot of them. When you get gradient changes with a solid speed limit, I think it's a lot more fun. You know? How cool is that? So 
However, this is coming up. Uh, this is, oh my god, a Manthan wait? I, I, you're going to have to excuse me with announce the pronunciation of names. Of certain places, I don't know how they're pronounced. So, uh, one thing I need to point out, by the way, um, well, I can't remember if I would have already said this, because I don't know in what order any of the videos I've made recently are coming out in, so whether I've said it or not <laughs> is, is another thing, to be perfectly honest. But I'm experimenting with having my webcam in sort of the top right uh, of the screen, or the bottom right, or the bottom left, depending on what game we're playing. Um, but I'm experimenting with having my webcam on, on YouTube videos. Um, as sort of as well as Twitch, and I have just seen this is going to be a very nice, oh. a very nice screenshot. Well, it would have been, except I'm too late because I cocked about with the thing. But actually, no, we might be able to make something of this. That looks quite nice. Yeah, very nice. Beautiful. Um, so I'm experimenting with it. Let me know what you think um, of, you know, that sort of idea. Do you want me to get the webcam? Do you want me to get the webcam off? Do you really not care because you're watching the video? Um, I hear a lot of mixed things from, well, a lot of mixed people, really. Certainly you know, ambient occlusion, but it's an old route, so what do you expect? Um, but yeah, I hear a lot of different things from a lot of different people regarding webcams, so let me know what you think. Uh, and I guess let me know what you think of sort of any upcoming changes. So the, the way I've got things now is not permanent. Um, because I'm only sort of, I guess really experimenting with coming back to YouTube because it's been such a long time. And sort of trying different things, which I say a lot. And then I never really do it, but I am trying. Uh, so over the coming weeks I'm going to sort of try and refresh a few little bits. It's not going to change massively but it'll be subtle changes and hopefully changes that will be enough to notice and enough to sort of benefit the viewer per se which is, I guess is essence what, what we're really trying to do isn't it? Sort of impress the viewer. Whether that works or not is sort of I guess yet to be seen but nonetheless we shall try. It's a real shame about ambient occlusion because the, the lighting in here, as you can see, is absolutely fantastic. But as I said, it's not RSC. I think it goes back to RSC. It definitely goes back to RSC. It may even be Kuju days. Um, Settles of color. It's a very old route. That much I can tell you. So it, it's to be expected, really. This was... I want to say one of the very first routes that came out when it became Train Simulator back in 2012, I believe. How correct I am on that, I don't know, because like a professional, I didn't do any research. But sometimes you can just tell with the, these old routes. I mean, you, you, we're passing on the old Kuju assets and the bridges and the track, and, and you can just, you know when a route is old on Train Sim. You, you just know. The more you play it, the more you see it, in essence. especially when you look at something in comparison, like the, I will say the weary lines, but you can't really count that. Something, say, like, I dare say, West Coast Main Line South, as bad as it originally was, sort of comparable to now, when it's actually in a, a reasonably good state, you can tell that it's come on a long way. There's less repetition of assets, there's less, um, sort of low quality, and not, not low quality, but better quality, shall we say. Okay. Very nice. The Mark II pack is just brilliant. I mean, those sounds are on point. Aren't they? Oh, they're so nice. Probably shut the power off there, actually. know what runs this now. 
Obviously not this route because I know the local sets don't really exist at all on the settled cards, Carlisle Line anymore to my knowledge. Um, I think it's it, is it? I think maybe 150s, maybe 158s. I know I've done a 158 scenario on this route before, so I, I think they're a thing, but I, I don't rightly know because obviously Arriva Trains Northern isn't exactly a thing anymore. Still a nice little country route though. Look at that. I mean, these places really are in the middle of nowhere, aren't they? But we're coming up here. What, what's this station? This is Lazenby and Kirksalwood. I mean, just. It's such a nice place. I can't imagine. Uh, actually not, I can imagine wanting to live one of these houses watching 37s roll past. That would be a nice life. You have to excuse me if I look like I'm shivering or if I'm doing what I'm doing now, which is actually rubbing my hands on my legs because it is extremely cold today. And unfortunately, my room being west-facing, <laughs> and where I live means when it's windy, which it also is today, my room gets very cold very quickly. And also, throughout the video, if you see me reaching for this, which you will now, it is not an insane amount of vodka, it is in fact a two-litre bottle of tap water. Those of you who will remember my streams back long ago will remember when I used to be drinking two litre bottles of coke like that. <laughs> I have now become a lot healthier though. Here's some joint sounds there. Look at this. Hold on a second. I see another screenshot. Actually, I see a very nice screenshot opportunity. Ho, ho, ho. Look at that. Just run it a bit longer. Yeah, that is where it's at, boys. So nice. And the other interesting thing is, is I've owned the 37 pack since it released. I've not got Volume 2, but I've had Volume 1 since its release date. And I've barely played it. So seeing this scenario come out, yes, I've had to, you know, pay out for the Mark 2 pack, which I didn't really want to do, because having no job, you don't really want to be spending money. But it was a worth the effort to, uh, to get a good 37 run in. Now, one thing I need to point out with this scenario is um, it does have the 66 with some HHA wagons. You won't see that, because despite me having all of the 60, in fact having both 66s on Steam, and the AP um, 66, and having reinstalled the AP 66, and all of the Steam 66s, the Freightliner stuff still refuses to show, apparently it doesn't exist, I don't know why that is, but the Freightliner stuff of the 66, the Freightliner liveries, have never ever ever worked for me in all the time I've owned the 66, so you won't see that. Um, my apologies, another abandoned station there. I, I suppose I really should have got this up. In fact, maybe I can have a look on my tablet whilst we drive along and see if I can find what it may be. Because, you know, th this is this is how um, professional we are these days. Abandoned stations, here we go. Look at 
There's some more power in there, I think, though. Now, apparently, I've just brought up Sally's Cottages. Maybe I'll find it for part two. Who knows? Who knows indeed? Probably shut off power there, though. My station coming through. Do you know one thing I've always found fascinating with the South Carlisle line? Is that one side is always shorter than the other side, platform length-wise. I don't quite know why that is. Again, if you know, then, then let me know in the comments, because I would very much like to know. Surprisingly he had no whistle board yet, but I guess we've not really got to the rambly bit yet, have we? I always call them rambly bits when you get those sort of countryside crossings, because you know the only people that ever use them are hikers and ramblers. You just know it. Short of being a rail enthusiast, then it, it is only ever hikers or ramblers <laughs> that, that use it. There's a road of the bridge there. Is that a farm track? Looks like it might be. Pretty cool. Missing EWS around. I think they were incorporated. Were they incorporated to? Is, was it either DB or was it GBRF? I can't quite remember. I think it might be GBRF they were incorporated into. The English, Welsh, and Scottish Railway. Chambers had a nice logo actually. Nice livery as well. But I always found that the the sort of maroon always looked really old. You could you could just tell. Like even here, you can just like that's the trouble with it being on a on a something like a 37, which let's be honest, is not the most economical of locomotives ever to have existed. It gets dirty very quickly. And they're not exactly very often clean. I mean I saw I was watching was on YouTube the other day as you are. And I was watching some 37 videos, and I, this one video of a 37 going past, it was still in regional railways delivery. And you think, how cool is that? Is a 37 still in regional railways delivery, even now? It'd be so nice to see it, apart from the fact it was so covered in grime, you actually thought it was painted grey. I think that was a GBRF, but the only rail operator I know that really take care of their 37s is... Uh, ROG Rail Operations Group, DB, um, sorry, not DB, DRS do to, a, to an extent, but I found it really is only ROG that, that sort of really take care of their 37s. It's 23% power. It's going to have to increase that in just a second after the signal as we start an uphill grade. It looks quite steep. I'm going to guess something like 1 in 130 again. It seems to be the sort of average grade in this route. Yeah, there you go. 1 in 132. So, bringing up to about 63. Jolted that a bit more than I wanted to. The infrastructure is so old on this line. Still.
just back a little bit. And that air hiss when you bring the power back, it's just so nice. Everything about the AP37 is just, it's, it's on point. I don't think I have any gripes with the 37, really. It's just so well done. And I know people are starting to get very angry at AP because they keep, you know, really pushing the boundaries of pricing. I can't lie, they are. But when when you get something done as as well as sort of AP are pushing out these days. You know, this is what twenty four ninety nine. I think is it worth twenty four ninety nine? Yes, absolutely, without a doubt. You know, it's the same as the new four one one. Is that worth? It's thirty pounds. I'll leave that to you to decide. I've driven the four one one, the, the four set pack, sap even, sap idiot, uh, sap pack. Um, I have done a scenario for it on Alan Thompson sim as well, so be sure to go and check that out. There are a range of them on there, of varying different scenarios, of varying different routes, so do go and have a look at that. I will leave the link to my ATS store in the description. Um, but having played it, having tinked around with it, do I think it's worth 30 pounds? Personally, no. I think it would be worth sort of the same price as 37, so sort of 24.99, sort of what their other packs have been. But I don't think it's worth 30 pounds. I, I personally think that's a bit much. I right, want to a 30 limit, so we'll get the brakes on here. Just four and a half miles outside of Appleby now. Give us a little bit of power just to get us back up toward 30. Rise back on Tom as well now. Only three minutes late and that's still coming down. So hopefully we'll uh, be all right with the, the next sort of four miles we've got to catch up with. Let's get a fly pass, shall we? Oh, I've lost my beer. Love it. The Mark Twos just I mean that is just that is on point. Absolutely on point. If you're wondering what I'm looking at over there, it's my phone. <laughs> so nice. Days. One annoying thing with the Celtic Carl Islands, they've got the, the track rumble the wrong way around, so when you're not on a bridge, it rumbles, and when you're on a bridge, it doesn't rumble, and it should be the other way around. Right, we're back up to 60, let's whack him into full power. of a screenshot. I, 
I'm aware you're probably not supposed to do that, but it's a 37, it can take it. Another abandoned station along the line. I'm assuming these are abandoned stations and they're not some part of another network that I'm not aware of. The DTG have sort of avoided. I can well imagine a route like this having a lot of abandoned stations on it. Sort of the sort of O Doctor Beaching kind of stations. Now, if you're an avid training enthusiast, you will know what the series O Doctor Beaching is. But I, I'd imagine that's what a lot of these stations have that feel to, you know. A station that's in the middle of nowhere has about four houses next to the station where all the station staff live, and that's it. <laughs> That's genuinely what I imagine, really. So I've a one in a one hundred and twenty one. one mile from, uh, one and a half mile, sorry, from my very first stop on the line today, which is Appleby. Running ever so slightly late, but hopefully with a bit of late braking, we might be able to get that uh, down a little bit. Well, actually, no, we not, because it's already 14.09, so uh, timings are a little bit off on this, I think it's safe to say. Which means we won't complete the scenario, sadly. Oh well. It's still a nice run. are quite good on this as well, so you can leave braking quite late with a 37 or and we've got two of them as well. Kill the power of that, and I think we'll start the braking. Just very lightly. Does it mean it's, it's, a, it's a typical Arriva service, isn't it? You know, late. Why, why, you know, we aim to accurately represent simulation here on, on, on the channel, so why, why would I not do that? a little bit late though. Actually, you know, I think we'll be all right. to the end of the platform. Yeah, let's have that. Okay, right, so guys, that's going to leave part number one of the video there. During part two, we'll continue up to Kirkby Stephen and uh, then Settle. So, thank you very much for watching part one, and I shall see you very shortly in part number two, to which I will leave the link to now. See you soon.